Welcome to Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. Pinnacle is proud to be the official bank of the Tennessee Titans. Visit titansbanking.com to discover what makes Titans banking the ultimate checking for Titans fans. Pinnacle Financial Partners, member FDIC. With Amy Wells, I am Mike Keith. Keith Bullock is making his way to our spacious new audio podcast studio here at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. As he is on his way in, um, some of the news of the day to discuss, and we certainly will want to discuss it with him, um, really a lot. A, a lot of news for a Wednesday, but the the thing that has really garnered the most attention, and with good reason, is within the last 90 minutes, maybe. Okay. National news hit first and then confirmed by the local media in Indianapolis that Michael Pittman, who didn't practice today with a back injury, is going to miss significant time. And there is a feeling that Michael Pittman uh, may go on injured reserve. Wow. I, I mean, that's huge. It is huge. Uh, Michael Pittman is a, is a very talented receiver. 6'4", 223, fifth-year man out of USC, 109 catches last year, 99 catches the year before that, over 1,000 yards receiving the year before that. I, I mean, he's just been effective since he got in the league, period. And 1,000-yard uh, games, I mean, he's he's done a lot of stuff, but – What's really impressive, and here's Keith Bullock. Welcome. Can't sneak in anymore. That's right. You can't, we're, <laughs> by the way, we're live on the radio. Um, what's really impressive about Michael Pittman, and Coach Mack and I were talking about this when the news hit, he is a high-volume catcher. Yes. And what I mean by that is, he, you know, 109 catches last year in 16 games. That's roughly seven catches a game. 9.8 targets per game Ooh. last year. So he played 16 games. He had 156 targets. In the eight games that he's played against the Titans, he's been targeted 10.3 times per game. Wow. So 82 targets in eight games, 82 targets, 50 catches, 529 yards, and three touchdowns. 24 of his 50 catches have gone for first downs. You know what's interesting? What's interesting? I mean, I guess that when you say high volume, that's what you mean. He catches a high volume of, or is targeted a high volume of the it's amount of it's times. It's both. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, uh, you throw the ball, what, 25 times a game, 25, we'll say? 30 times 25, a game, yeah. 30. That's, I mean, like a third. A third, of yeah. your attempts at passing the ball are going to one singular person. That's a lot. Yeah, I think it's safe to say between 30 and 40% of their targets go to him. And so... High volume. High volume. <laughs> high volume, undoubtedly. And, and what jumps out to me about that, too, is if they want to throw it, where do those targets go now? Hmm. Josh Downs is the slot receiver, and he's... He's an, got a toe. Well, he's out with the – he missed practice today with the toe injury. But he is a high-volume target guy already. Uh, their other wide receiver, Alec Pierce, is the big play guy. Yeah. He's averaging 28 yards a catch, but he only has 13 catches in five games. Interesting. He, he gets open. He goes deep. He makes – I mean, he's got two catches of over 60 yards. I mean, he, he's made a lot of big plays. As a matter of fact, Indianapolis as a team has 13 pass plays of 25 or more yards. So far this season? So far this season. They okay. throw for 225 yards per game. Wow. So, Keith Bullock, is it a bigger deal to Anthony Richardson – if he doesn't have Michael Pittman, or if they go with Joe Flacco at quarterback, is it a bigger deal to Joe Flacco that he doesn't have Michael Pittman if all these reports are true? Um, I'd say that 
I mean, it's a big deal to both quarterbacks. He's their main, as you guys just broke down, he's their main target. He make at the wide receiver position. So either quarterback is going to miss him. Um, I think that Joe Flacco being the more uh, veteran quarterback with more of a pocket presence and more of a, you know, feel of the pro game um, above, above um, Anthony Richardson, um, you know, I, yeah, I can't say that one would use him more because they obviously he's that type of player that they both would need him. So he's just going to be missed in um, <clears throat> in their offense regardless. And, you know, I don't think that affects the Titans at all because the Titans showed against Miami defensively that they can make the adjustments needed to dominate an offense that are missing, you know, um, you know, key pieces so i don't think that the titans defense has much to worry about regardless um who's in there obviously you never want to um you know count out uh the running back because he's um is he hurt he's hurt he's hurt too oh well yeah. he did he didn't break you talk about jonathan Here, taylor let me share my yeah. injury report yeah. with yeah. It. i mean yeah. jo- jonathan taylor and they i mean listen indianapolis especially on defense has so many significant injuries right now <laughs> Um, DeForest Buckner's out. Yeah. You know, Quiddy Pay was limited in practice today. He's a defensive end. Um, cornerback Kenny Moore was back today. He's one of the better nickels in the game. But on offense, Josh Downs didn't practice today with the toe. We mentioned Michael Pittman with the back, expected to miss time. Trey Sermon, the backup running back, uh, didn't practice today with a collarbone injury. The right tackle, Braden Smith, out with a knee ankle, I think more of a rest. But again, Jonathan Taylor, who missed the game Sunday against Jacksonville, still out with the ankle injury. Anthony Richardson limited today with the oblique injury. Good news for the Colts, though. Their veteran center, Ryan Kelly, with a neck injury, was a full participant. So they may get some help back on the offensive line. But not having Pittman, that's a big deal. Yeah, and that's really like their problem. You know, um, <laughs> you know the Titans having only one win as a player, that's what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? The more, the better. So that means as, um, uh, as a team, we have to be prepared to go out there and put together an impressive performance because as a team, I'm thinking we haven't won at home yet. So this right. is a great opportunity with all these guys having their injuries. Look, Titans have injuries as well, but like what I said, like Indianapolis are really missing some key players that will make or can make or break this game for them. And I think that it's a perfect opportunity for uh, this Titans team to come out and, and jump on them and put together, you know, um, a full a full game game plan together. Uh, Will Levis, he practiced today, correct? He did. So we got that out of the way. So he'll be out there. I think this is a great um, <clears throat> game coming off the bye for um, Will and, you know, the offense and Coach Callahan to go out there with a game plan that after coming off of a bye that as fans – they see improvement. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. Um, I feel like there was, you know, we didn't know if Will was going to go or not. Okay, cool. He's going. You got the win. You got off the schneid. Well, we think. Okay. I, I mean, he practiced. But think we- however it goes. At the end of the day, um, one of the things that resonated with me was when Coach Callahan said that they're going to see everything that Will Levis – you know, they want to know everything sure. about Will Levis, and this is a part of being an NFL quarterback – um, and obviously you're not going out there if you're hurt, but what is your pain threshold? Whether you can go out there, you're smart enough to know, coach, I, I might need to sit one out, or you go out there knowing that you're a little banged up, you know, and your style is a little aggressive. How do you tone your style back going out there and playing? Um, you know, are you cautious when you have to scramble and those things of things of that nature? And then when it comes to, you know, maybe getting the ball out on time, taking the short pass, you know, just some of those things that you would like to see your, you know, young quarterback start to mature as he gets to game 14 overall and starts to um, get more game film. And I I've, and I definitely know for a fact, um, you know, 
we all knew year one was going to be different than year two for Will Levis. Just didn't know which way it was going to go. But with having six games of film on him from last year, starting the season, not ne him starting the season, not necessarily, you know, um, I would say in tune maybe to – Look, the game plan is going to change, kid. You know what I'm saying? Sure. They're, they're going to know some things out about you that you don't know that they know. And one of those things is they can trap you. They can bait you into throwing a trap. And we've seen that, you know, in a couple games. So that's another thing you want to see. You know, um, how does he come out and assess um, the defense and stuff like things of that nature? When you're getting ready to face a team that has so many injuries, like the Indianapolis Colts right now, at some pretty key positions, um, are you at a disadvantage when it comes to a game plan perspective? Because all of the sudden, things that they would normally do, they're not necessarily going to be doing anymore. Their game plan might be altered to try and uh, accommodate for this quarterback versus that quarterback versus – not having all of these offensive weapons that usually they have. Does that, when you're a defense trying to get ready to play, or the offense, because, I mean, both sides of the ball, really, when you're trying to get ready to play them, are you kind of looking saying, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know on this one. <laughs> no, not necessarily because they have to run some version of their offense. Their offense can't change that much. Um, you saw – you know, you have two great examples, the Green Bay game and the Miami game. You know, the Green Bay game, they were able to – Green Bay was able to execute a little bit more on short notice with an offense than where Miami was, where um, defensively on, on the other team, you can't worry about it. You know, you got to go in trusting your coaches are giving you the information that you need. And what's important in these games, Amy, is everyone has to do their job. This is these games are really important for everyone to do their job because you see this guy down, you see Taylor down, you see, you know, Pittman down, you see these key players down on the line, and you just think that oh, this is going to be a cakewalk. We can go out there, but no, we all know that you can't sure. take it like that from Sunday to Sunday. So it's very important that everyone does their job this week because at the end of the day, you're trying to stack wins, you're trying to get better each week. So this is one of those games where if you do get a lack, little lackadaisical as a player and you think you can take the week off because you don't have a Jonathan Taylor or a Michael Pittman and you could get exposed and then it takes a team that's trying to ascend back down a little bit just because, you know, not everyone came ready to and prepared to play. I am a little – obsessed isn't the right word, but I am more interested than I should be in who is going to be the quarterback – for the Indianapolis Colts this week. And I think I would be no matter what, even even if the Titans weren't playing Indy, because it's just two completely different adventures. This is like one of it's those like books. It's like two languages. Yeah, it's one of those books where it's like, choose your own adventure. If you go with this guy, if you go with Anthony Richardson, you are getting the youngest quarterback in the league. You are getting the guy who currently has, and this is fascinating, the lowest passer rating in the National Football League amongst quarterbacks. And it, it's a completely different experience that if you go and with – And he might be the – he's he might be a more impressive athlete than Lamar Jackson. Right. He does because of things how big that are so it's just crazy. bonkers. Yeah. On the other hand, you get Joe Flacco, who is the second oldest – quarterback in the National Football League, currently has the higher pass, highest passer rating in the NFL and has been called boring a time or two, but he's consistent. And so it's like two completely different experiences. And I am just floored by the fact that, and I'm sure they know what they're going to do. I'm sure they have an idea, but like Why for this, I tell you, <laughs> but, yeah, but I mean, they're not going to tell me. They're certainly right. not going to tell anybody, but for this offense, like the Colts offense to be preparing to be like, well, we've either got this guy or this guy. I mean, it's like oranges and tomato soup. Like these are two very different things. Well, I think that, you know, if I were playing in this game defensively, I'd rather see Anthony Richardson just because the way that Joe Flacco has been playing the last two years, he's showing that he could just go in and play. He can go in and make a, a good tomato soup with oranges. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, he's one of those guys. He's going to get the ball out on time. He's going to challenge this defense 
even with the pieces that are there because it's all about him. You understand what I'm saying? Like almost when Aaron Rodgers was here, he's a little older, um, savvy vet, get the ball off. I ain't getting hit at 36, however old Joe, Joe Flacco 40. was it. Right. Joe, Joe Flacco will be in 40 the, in January. Yeah. I remember him anyway. You, you <laughs> played, played against, against him your rookie sure. year. Did you? Sure. Twice. Anthony Richardson was 10 when Joe Flacco won the, his – the Super Bowl, which is so offensive, yeah, but for so many so different offensive. reasons. Yeah, wow. because you know who wasn't 10 when Joe Flacco won the Super Bowl? Any of us. Yeah, right. I'm offensive. Offended. I'm offended. <laughs> we need a break. <sighs> yeah, we do. And then we'll be back to, to <laughs> talk. I've, I've got a little trivia question for you when we come back. Fun. Yeah. I, I think you're going to like this one very much. You're listening to Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners, official bank of your Tennessee Titans on Titans Radio. You're listening to Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. Pinnacle is the official bank of the Tennessee Titans. Visit titansbanking.com to learn more about Pinnacle. All right, so here's the trivia question. October 13th, 2019, the Titans played a road game in Denver. What's significant about that game? October 13th. 19th, did you say? October 13th, uh. 2019. Oh. I'll give 2019. I'll Amy, give, Amy, you should get this one. Do you want a hint? Yes, I would like a hint. <laughs> the opponent was Denver. Okay. You should get this one. In Denver? Hey. In Denver. Another hint. Ah. I'm not going to get it. Where did we eat the night before? It's it how I orient myself to It's not with you. I was with my all... wife's cousin. Oh. Went to did a brewery. You, did you hear the way he said that, too? Like, mm, not with you. Mm. Better options. Mm. <laughs> I like Mike and Debbie. They're great people. What was significant about that Mike, we that give up. Trip? Oh, I remember exactly where I ate. Also a brewery, not with you. Um, <laughs> Do you know the answer to the question? What was significant about that game? Yeah, one. Is that when Marcus Mariota? Marcus Mariota's last start yeah. with the Titans. They mm-hmm. lost 16 to nothing Dang. to the Denver Broncos. But here's part two. Who was Denver's starting quarterback that day? Trevor Simeon. Trevor Simeon? That's a good guess. Oh, man. I'm not right? No. Oh, Mike got me hype. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor Simeon, who's now a Titan as that's of why, today. That's why I said yeah, that. That would have been a great you transition. You see what I was doing there? I liked it very much. <laughs> was it Joe Flacco? Joe Flacco. That's the uh, la- Flacco. That is the last <laughs> time Joe Flacco has played against the Titans. It was five years ago for Denver. Really? 18 of 28, 177 with an interception. He was sacked once. Denver won the game 16 to nothing. Yeah. Marcus Mariota, 7 of 18 for 63 yards, two interceptions, three sacks, oh. was replaced by Ryan Tannehill in the second half. Yeah. And from there on, it was Tannehill's ship. Yeah. But ironically, it was Joe Flacco who, who beat was, us in that game. Who was the starter? I, I did not remember that. I might have thought Trevor Simeon, who joined the Titans today. Trevor Simeon signed to the practice squad today. He began his career in Denver. 2015, he was picked number 250 overall. He started against the Titans December 11, 2016 at Nissan Stadium. For the Redskins? No, for for Denver. Oh. Trevor Simeon go. threw for 334 yards and yet the Titans won 13 to 10. How about that? Wow. How about that? Trevor Mike Simeon. Malarkey's first full year, Titans went 13-10. Mm-hmm. to 10. Uh, Simeon, 40 games, 33 starts. He's thrown for over 7,700 yards, 44 touchdowns, 32 interceptions, 15-18 uh, and 18 as a starter, four games of over 300 yards passing, but none since 2017. Now – Why did the Titans bring him in? Almost 33 years old. He was with Brian Callahan in Denver his rookie year in 2015. He was also with Brian Callahan last year in training camp in Cincinnati. 
And he was with Bo Hardigree, the quarterback coach in New York with the Jets in 2019. He knows everybody. But so I was going over this this morning with uh, Ashley Farrell. By the way, he went to Orlando Olympia, which I think is where Chris Johnson went to high school. I believe that's the same high school CJ went to. He's fast. Wow. Yeah. Everyone out of there is fast. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I was like, Simeon CJ, with yeah, a lot of we know. You know Simeon. <laughs> Simeon played at uh, – <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Simeon played at Northwestern, by the way. <laughs> Simeon's out of here fast. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's in the water. <laughs> All right, so um, so Ashley Farrell and I are talking this morning, and we remember that Trevor Simeon was here. He's mm-hmm. been here once before and on the practice squad. And I'm thinking, well, was it 2019? No, it was 2020. It sure was. And then I speak with Amy Wells. Yes. We talk sometimes. And I'm discussing this with her, and she says, you remember, he was the designated survivor at quarterback. For COVID? COVID. COVID. Yeah. So here's the story. He played in the game? No. 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 I don't think he was ever on property. (laughs) I talked to him. Yeah. I talked to him after practice today just to get some clarity about what designated survivor was for him. Uh, that's what they called it. I'm not mm-hmm. making it up. Put that um, on my resume. <laughs> so Trevor Simeon signs with the Titans as a free agent August the 19th. They release him Labor Day-ish, sign him to the practice squad the next day. He remains with the team through November 20th when the Saints signed him to their active roster. But he was backing up Ryan Tannehill and who? I knew you were going to ask me this question. The too. Jesus guy. No, 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 no. Not Charlie no, Whitehurst. It wasn't. <laughs> way, um, way that was way too early. For clipboard Jesus. No. Uh, the really nice one who was so smart. Logan Woodside. Yes. So Had a sleeve tattoo. Keep so, going. So Trevor Simeon <laughs> is the designated survivor quarterback. He does come on property. Okay. He he was not somebody they just left at his apartment. He did meetings on Zoom at home, mm-hmm. and then he would come in and he would do a work while the team was on the practice field. He did a workout in the bubble. They had cordoned off basically his That's own. That's crazy. It mm-hmm. is crazy. They had cordoned off his own little weight room, mm-hmm. and so he would do this workout. And then when the team went in, when everybody was off the practice field. He would go out on the practice field and do his own practice basically by himself. Crazy. So, I mean, mean, I'm sure if people saw it from afar, they're like, oh, who's the poor guy pretending to be a Titan? (laughs) But this is what you did during COVID. Can, Can we pause and remind everybody why we had to do this? It was not only in case... One person got COVID, but you have to remember that within the NFL, there were le- there were rules about, okay, so if you tested positive, how long you had to be out. That's right. But also, if you were a close contact you with somebody, out. you had to be out a certain amount of days. So if a quarterback tested positive, essentially the whole quarterback room, room. Oh, I got was you. So out. they had to have If it one. happened on like a Monday, you might be able to squeak through and still play. But if someone tested positive on like a Thursday or a Friday, you have no well, quarterback. They, they told everybody in the they told all the teams, they said you are you are the game's not going to be postponed if you don't have a quarterback. Oh, that, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's on problem. you. Yeah. That is your problem. Oh, yep. wow. I so, mean because remember when because we, we had the first outbreak. Mm-hmm. Right after we got back from Minnesota beating them uh 31 to 30 exciting game, we had the first outbreak and we were down for 16 days. The Titans realistically didn't practice for 16 days. And Did you play a game? No. We, they postponed our game. We burned because a bye. We burned the bye early, and then we played Buffalo on Tuesday night, mm-hmm. and we still had 15 guys out with COVID yep. and won Something the game. Like that. yeah. One big. It was mm-hmm. crazy. Never should have. 42 to 16, I think it was. Yep. Never should have happened, but the Titans found a way to win the game. Um, so 
when I was asking Trevor Simeon, I said, this is obviously going to be a big chapter in the book, right? He goes, oh, yeah. He said, I've seen some some odd stuff. Yeah. But he said, this was pretty odd. And what he did, too, is he lived at this apartment. And while he was living in the apartment, he had nothing to do during the court. I mean, it's not like you could have anybody over or anything. Yeah. So he would go out and shoot basketball. That was his big release it, before before he could come in, he would be shooting hoops at like all hours, he said. Wow. But uh, he's here now and allowed to come in the building. He practiced, <laughs> he practiced with the team today. I actually shook his hand. They I, should have like sterilized him just for fun. Yeah, just, <laughs> just well, I, tested him I, I and did, rubbed you know, him down. Just, just for luck, I did use hand sanitizer <laughs> immediately after I shook his hand. Um <laughs> I did. I mean, I was like, oh, well. Kind of <laughs> we don't know about this guy yet. <laughs> I'm not tempting fate here. So Trevor Simeon oh, is here, and uh, he played last year three games. He started three games for the Jets when Aaron Rodgers went out and they went through the cavalcade of other quarterbacks. Uh, Jets didn't sign him after the season. As far as I can tell, uh, he hasn't been with anybody since – the end of the 2023 season, but he was in here today and slinging it pretty well. He is on the practice squad, and many people are taking this to mean he's here because Will Levis is not going to be able to go on Sunday. But I'm here to tell you, Will Levis was a full participant in practice today. Ta-da. So make of that what you will. Uh, other full participants, Ernest Jones with an elbow and Cedric Gray. The rookie linebacker from North Carolina, whose 21-day return to play window is open off IR. Cedric Gray with the shoulder did practice. Uh, limited. DeAndre Hopkins, rest. Jeffrey Simmons with the elbow that we know about. Legereus Sneed, rest. Uh, not practicing today. Jamal Adams with a hip. Traylon Burks. Personal, I think they had a child today, yesterday or today. Yeah, yesterday or today. Congratulations. And congratulations to Traylon and his wife. And Keandre Colbert, who hurt his knee at Miami, he also did not practice. But there is an addition to the active roster today, and that's a pretty interesting story. We will talk about that further. No trivia questions in the next segment, I promise. That's okay. <laughs> it, it, th- that was a really fun jog down memory lane. I mean, we've experienced a lot of bizarre in the last, like, five years. Yeah. Like, a lot of just weird stuff. I'm sure COVID sounded crazy. How you guys were just explaining all that. Oh, that COVID was, um... was nuts. Well, and did we even see practice that year? I, uh, yes. During Eventually? No, no. You know what? We never did. We saw some during training camp. Right. Because remember, we all had to stand oh, really yeah. spread out. They put squares it, it on the crazy. side of the field. Yeah, we, and we had to we wear masks. We weren't here at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park at all that fall. 2020, we were at home. At home. Because everything we did was via Zoom. We did travel. We traveled um, commercially. Separate. separate from the team. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But it was funny because we're in the new part of Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. Our old offices were in the old part. And when we came in in January of 21, we were having to move out because they were making that the executive wing. And it was untouched by time. It was untouched by time. There was stuff still on your desk from March. <laughs> like my calendar was uh, like I hadn't changed the calendar at all. My to-do list for right. that week Time was the same. It was crazy. It was like walking into the twilight zone. Nothing had changed. It was like because the, the TV show Lost. Yeah. One day we left and we just didn't go back for a year. And then when we came back, they were doing all the construction but on this But we building. had to get all our stuff out and you had 30 minutes. Yeah. Get your stuff. And leave. And get out. And you had to basically make an appointment mm-hmm. to come get your stuff. Somebody stole my lamp. I'll never get over <laughs> it. It wasn't in my office. I love that lamp. <laughs> I knew it was you. <laughs> More of Titans tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. It's up next on Titans Radio. <laughs> Back on the show. By the way, uh, a couple of notes on Joe Flacco before we get to the other piece of news. Joe Flacco, 
Originally drafted 18th overall by Baltimore in 2008. Mm-hmm. Played there through 2018, Denver in 2019, the Jets in 2020, Philadelphia and the Jets in 2021, the Jets in 2022, the Jets and the Browns last season. He was the NFL's comeback player of the year last year for what he did for the Browns. He was in Baltimore until 2018? He was. Man, he's even older than I remember. Played against the Titans seven times. Again, we mentioned earlier the last for the Denver Broncos in 2019. Most valuable player of Super Bowl 47. Where the lights went out. Played at Delaware after starting his career at Pitt. Could not beat out Tyler Palco. Hmm. Tyler Palco played here, didn't he? Tyler Palco. Not long. No, nah, he might not. I'd be making stuff up. He could be. <laughs> I, mean, I almost remember, like, I mean, some of those four, why, some of those fourth quarterbacks. Yeah, like the, yeah. Tyler Powell. Like, I wouldn't just remember that name. Like, that yeah. just kind of stands Maybe out. Maybe he did. I don't, I don't know. know. It doesn't Google matter. It wasn't here long. I'll Google it. Don't worry. <laughs> so, Flacco has thrown for 39,503 yards and uh, 218 touchdowns. He's fumbled 100 times. You've been in the league a long time when you fumbled a hundred. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean that's a, that's almost a badge of honor, right? Is it? For sure. But I mean, you're a quarterback. I mean, you played 17 years in the league. Yeah, I mean, it, I I don't think I would lead with. I've well, been here I mean, so he long. Hasn't, I've fumbled a hundred times. He hasn't. No, that won't be his calling card. No. The most Pretty interesting nice thing about stuff. Joe Flacco, he's never made a Pro Bowl. Really? Nope. I'm stunned at that. Last weekend against Jacksonville, 33 of 44, 359, three touchdowns in a losing effort. He has a That's lot of kids, That's what I'm saying. He, he knows where to go with the ball. He does. <laughs> I mean. Well, he got hot in the fourth quarter. They scored 24 points in the fourth quarter. It's got to be like, you know, like these these old professional golfers that have, you know, maybe they're not. Yeah, they're old pros, and they're just not on the tour anymore. And they're just going to go out and, and stroke a, a 68 like Every it's once nothing. in a while. Yeah, you know what I'm I, saying? I mean, every like, once in a while. I mean, you know, we've seen Mickelson do it. It's crazy. And, you, I mean, I'll never forget. It's been years now. Tom Watson at the British Open in this century. Uh, you just be on like a streak. Yeah, like you just, just Because good, it's all muscle memory. Have and a good, then have a good weekend. You get in the right system when yep. it comes to quarterback. It's like, oh, all right. Yeah, I'm going to take the check down. A check down. Okay, now I got the linebackers biting on the check down. Oh, let's throw this dig back here for 16. You know what I'm saying? Now I got them <laughs> on the dig. Oh, double move. Yay. <laughs> right. Then you give them the old, the old 40-year-old one finger up in the air as you jog down the field. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how it is, man. Because I played with this, um, this old gentleman. He's probably like 65, 70. And I'm not much of a golfer, but I'm not going to slow the group up. You know what I mean? But this gentleman, he's going – 140 every time. About 140. To, if he's really dry, hitting it, getting into it, maybe 180. But he's par and birdie and every right. time. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's always <laughs> tough to play with those guys. It was cool. You you out drive them by 100 yards, and yet they get yeah. a four and you get an eight. It was it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, 53rd man on the Titans roster added today from the practice squad, Leroy Watson. Uh, wearing number 72. You thought I was going to do Randy Watson, <laughs> From the you? West Going Down episode. <laughs> yeah. that's, my mom. that's funny. Randy Watson. And Leroy. They got to be related. <laughs> no, but Randy Watson was from Coming, coming to, to America. America. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. They got to be related. He could be like his great uncle or something. It's got to be. I mean, when you hear our CDO Hall. Yeah. Call him Randy <laughs> Watson. <laughs> um. <laughs> Leroy Watson. <laughs> you can't not do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. I know. I, but I you have to stop to. myself because I every time I see it, I want to call him. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're too professional to make that I, mistake. I know. I know. And and he's an offensive lineman, so you do, he right. doesn't want flashy, right? You were right. Leroy Watson, 26 year old. He was obtained from Cleveland in exchange for a 2024 seventh round pick. That was April the 12th. He played for Bill Callahan last year in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And uh, sounds like going to be working at the right tackle spot, trying to take reps or even potentially, I guess, the spot away from Nicholas Petit-Frere. 
Uh, his background, Leroy Watson, went to training camp with Atlanta in 22, spent four days on New England's practice squad, and then the rest of 2022 on San Francisco's practice squad. He was there for the first two months of last season. Cleveland signed him to their active roster November the 2nd, and then he saw action in seven games as a reserve for the rest of that season because they had so many injuries. So he played a, a good bit of football down the stretch. Watson uh, was waived by the Titans on August 27th, signed to the practice squad the next day, and then he has been activated today. Uh, he began his college career at Hutchinson Community College, where he spent two seasons, a tight end. Hmm. Athlete. Athlete. Yeah. 37 games in three seasons at the University of Texas, San Antonio. He caught 25 passes for 297 yards and two touchdowns as a tight end. He is originally from Snellville, Georgia. He, Randy, Randy Watson. Oh, no, Leroy we did Watson. it to you. We yes. did it. It's us. It's awesome. Randy Watson. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. The I know Snellville, you don't like that. I love that movie, by the way. I still love that movie. <laughs> the Snellville, Georgia native did not play sports until his sophomore year of high school. Wow. Wow. He started playing piano at four years old. Oh. And was big into theater and plays. His mom is a professional singer. There is something to be said about the artistic creatives. He's Makes a, you smart. And now he's battling for a starting job in the NFL in what is year three out of college. Obviously, he was an undrafted um, who went to training camp with the Falcons in 2022. A late bloomer because he – Sort of grew into the offensive line. Why are you laughing? No, I. I mean, I mean, he, I, he who says it? you can't have it all? The well, kid I'm, plays piano. He since is he's a, four years old. Yeah, he is a great actor. He's musical. I didn't he say can, he was a great. He actor. He might be really good at it. You don't know. And he's multi. He diverse. also. Yeah, he was a tight well, I mean, there's nothing wrong line, with then. that. I think it's great. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I, very I, excited all about I this started profile. To say before you started laughing. Well, it was the late bloomer comment. Well, but I, I mean, he didn't play until his sophomore year of high school. He was a tight. He went to junior college. He was a tight end. He was doing he's, other stuff. Well, that and he he's already al- bloomed again. He he's also. I know what you mean, Mike. I'm sorry, well, I Mike. mean he's continued to get bigger as the other thing because he's six five, three hundred ten pounds. In his sports, yeah. in his sports journey, he's he's a late bloomer. So to speak, he's know? 26 years old. He had to take a different course, not the standard standard path. Hmm. Right. You know, but I mean, this is a move with the with John Ajuku being waived. Brian Callahan saying today that the Titans hope to sign Ajuku back to the practice squad. That's their hope. Um, with that being the case, they decide to bring Watson up. And, and, again, he's been on the practice squad since uh, August the 27th. Rooting for him. Cheering for the theater kids. Rooting for him all. I, I didn't Go say kids. he was a theater kid. You I, sure did. You said he was in theater. Not there's anything wrong with that. I got two theater kids in my family. I know. Yeah. I, got no. two, I, mean, I mean, theater is good. It's great. I'm into it. You're acting like I'm saying something bad. I'm very excited. Well, you're laughing. I'm not <laughs> laughing. When people, I said I'm cheering for the when theater When people kid. watch the Titans Tonight replay on the Titans YouTube channel, they, they will see. They won't see laughter. They, they will see how you were cracking up when I, I just said I called him a late bloomer. You, He's, you did. You did do that. Keith, and it made me giggle. Keith's watching the Mets. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. I'm not I mean, even I here right you now. guys go back and forth with the late bloomer. I gave my two cents. I, I agree. <laughs> He's a late bloomer in the sense of his football journey. There's All right. No when we come back, I've got to ask Keith Bullock a New York question. And it doesn't, I like New York questions. It doesn't have anything to do with the Mets. This is Titans tonight. Not that there's anything wrong with the Mets. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with anything. Broadway's our, in New York. Our whole – our whole desire on <laughs> Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners, is not to offend anyone. <laughs> we take no opinion, no stance on anything. We're not. Pinnacle is, although we think Pinnacle is great. Oh, my gosh. 
The official bank of the Tennessee Titans. They are great. They are great. Visit TitansBanking.com to discover what makes Titans Banking the ultimate checking for Titans fans. Pinnacle Financial Partners, member FDIC. Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock continues on Titans Radio. (laughs) Remaining time on Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. Jets fired their coach yesterday. They say goodbye, Robert Sala. Promote Jeff Ulbrich, the defensive coordinator. Uh, Jeff Ulbrich is draft class. going to be the interim coach. Apparently, Nathaniel Hackett is going to stay as the offensive coordinator. Why is the world surprised as they are that the Jets made a change right now? I mean, it's a, it's a New York thing, too. You know, they're always – the Yankees and the Mets are in the playoffs, and <laughs> the Knicks have just made a big trade. And they just got Patrick Ewing, so they're getting yeah. – everybody's getting there. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, so <laughs> Woody Johnson's not going to sit and let nothing happen with a ball club that still has the potential. You know, if they win Monday night against Buffalo, the Jets are in first place in the AFC East. That's crazy. It is crazy. Why are people surprised? Why do people keep going, I am shocked. I am so not. I think yeah, I think it's like half and half. I think some people want to play. Like I think people that have real common football sense that kind of, you know, pick up the paper every day during football season. I'm not saying you read it all the way through or you click an article. You know what I mean? Keep up with their team. You know what's going on. Um, I think it's those armchair quarterbacks that just – jump in is like what i can't believe you know what i'm saying or robert sala fans you know what i'm saying i don't know how he developed any fans not to say he's a bad guy i'm not saying he's a bad guy i just no, feel like he yeah. he hasn't been there long I enough right. he's like, 20 and 36 <laughs> yeah you know it's what I'm not saying? like he was 36 and 20 and listen i think robert sala is a good coach right i think he's probably getting a bit of a, a bum deal in all this I think the Aaron Rodgers thing is yeah, a, is a, it would have to be hard. To I, I, well, I coach mean, you, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, you bring him in, and you're gonna have some. The Aaron Rodgers of it all is what makes it so not surprising, though. Oh, like, sure. You have Aaron Rodgers back, and you're what two and three? Like, eh, this isn't working. And, like, well, I understand and the that thing because happens on the sidelines in I the didn't Thursday like that. night game. I didn't that like that. Weird. Well, but that's just weird. I mean, the, it's just odd. It's just the whole thing was weird. I didn't yeah. like that. He gave him like like you're in a bar. Like, yo, get off me, dude. Yeah, like, back up. Yeah, like, was I, like, I, I wasn't feeling that. You don't. You know, hey, just, but that's. That's him. That's him, I guess. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every time I've met him and been around him, he's been cool. But Have you ever hugged you know, him? Mm. I know not to now. Yep. <laughs> and don't, whatever you don't, do. They don't give me two to the chest. <laughs> Back up. But, but here's the thing. <laughs> if they beat Buffalo, they're 3-3 three and three and 2-0 and oh in the AFC East. They go to Pittsburgh. That's winnable. I mean, it'll be a tough game. They go to New England. They've already beaten New England once. Then they have Houston at home on a Thursday night at Arizona, which is winnable, and then Indianapolis at home. I I could see them being 8-4 and going into their bye the first weekend in December. Well, the owner couldn't. (laughs) Well, Well, maybe now. And and he is also – he is a regular social media user. Participant. Participant. People Mm. would allow – he's a billionaire – he just gets bored and wants to interact with the trolls on Man, if I was Twitter. a billionaire, I'd do that too, I think. Would you really? Maybe. From I'd my s- island? Yeah, I would sit <laughs> in my magical castle that I have built for myself, and I would just sporadically get involved. You would get bored. Yeah. You would get bored. I'd, Obviously. I'd just like throw well, it a does, cookie, it doesn't stir it up, like and then walk away. He consulted with anybody. He said after the fact that he talked to the GM. But it's like, yeah. But like, really. talk to him to be like, so this is what I'm going to do. He made the decision himself as owner. That's what it sounds like. That's crazy. But it <laughs> is so New York. It is. For Keith Bullock and Amy <laughs> Wells, Mike Keith reminds you we're on the air at 11 o'clock this Sunday with Titans Countdown. We'll talk to you then. Good night, everybody.